Johnny, you're ready with the starting lineup. All right, Jay, thank you very much. Leading off for the Cincinnati Reds tonight is Cal Daniels in left field. Batting second at third base, Chris Sabo. At shortstop, Barry Larkin bats third. Eric Davis has been hot. He's in center field batting fourth. Paul O'Neill is in right field. He'll bat fifth. Nick Kosaski is at first base batting sixth tonight. Batting seventh, Bo Diaz behind the plate. And the eighth place hitter tonight, Jeff Treadway. And the pitcher in his first major league start, Norm Charlton out of San Antonio, Texas. And defensively for the St. Louis Cardinals, it's Vince Coleman, Willie McGee, and Tom Bernanski in the outfield. Terry Pendleton, Ozzie Smith, Jose Okendo, and Pedro Guerrero at first. That's a new man. Tony Pena behind the plate. And the big right-hander, Jose De Leon, with a record of 8-8 eight and eight on the mound. See his record there, and he's pitched well in his last few decisions. Have in the last four starts, he has two wins and two no decisions. 153 hits, good ratio, 61 base on balls, and he is a strikeout pitcher. De Leon from the Dominican, 27 years old. De Leon who came from the White Sox for Rick Horton and outfielder Lance Johnson last February. He was 11 and 12 at Chicago in 87. Originally the Pirates number three draft choice back in the June 79 draft went to the Sox for a fellow named Bobby Bonilla who has turned out to be a very fine performer for the Pittsburgh club. Let's remind you that this telecast comes to you through courtesy of multimedia broadcasting authorized under TV rights granted by the Reds solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Reds is prohibited. And the announcers on this telecast are employed by Multimedia Broadcasting with the approval of the Reds. Cal Daniels stepping in against De Leon. Daniels hitting 550 this year against the Cardinals. 409 career batting average against St. Louis. And the curveball is high. Daniels leads the National League in on base percentage with 402. Has a nine game hitting streak, and over that span, he's batted 394. Reds coming off a very good homestand. The Reds with a record of 61 and 58. Seven and a half out starting today's play. two strikes. De Leon grew up in Perth Amboy, New Jersey. He dropped out of high school, went back to the Dominican Republic. Set two career one hitters. He can be tough. A little number that is fouled down the left side. Pendleton going over to pick it up. Bruce Kim coaching at third base for the Reds, of course. Kim and across the diamond the big popper Lee May boy he had a good stroke didn't he John oh absolutely <laughs> one of the unique strokes in all of baseball he was very active with that bat always moving the hands very aggressive way inside and a good stop by Tony Pena who is behind the dish tonight Chris Sabo is on deck trying to get 500 on the road tonight. They are 29 and 30 coming into this game here at Bush Stadium starting this road trip with a three game series here. Foul back and out of play. Well Jay last year after 119 ball games the Reds were 62 and 57 At the same time this year 61 and 58 one game difference. The ERA for the pitching staff this year 3.45 last year was 4.43. Here's the 2-2, and it's high, and it's full. The Cardinals and the Reds meeting for the sixth time this season. Cincinnati swept the cards in the two games during the opening series. You remember one of those games was, was rained out, and it's going to be made up next Thursday. Next Thursday in Cincinnati. And a walk. Daniels worked him and hung in against De Leon. Daniels is at first. Last year the cards were eight and four against Cincinnati. Here's Whitey Herzog, Dorel Herzog. Over a thousand wins as a manager. Got the cards to the World Series in three of the last six years here, but they have fallen on very tough times this season. Chris Sabo 
Batting 277. A strike on the outside corner. Again, that's Jerry Davis calling the balls and strikes. There's the newcomer, Pedro Guerrero. The Cardinals sent John Tudor to Los Angeles. He rolled out there and won a game for them. Next reactions over that trade. Oh, boy. The curveball is high. Well, the Cardinals felt that from a public relations standpoint and from an offensive standpoint, they needed to get a Guerrero type ball player in here. Well, it certainly helps Bernanski. It certainly does. And of course, it certainly helps Los Angeles to pick up a pitcher of the quality of John Tudor down the stretch, doesn't it? Now they don't have to face John Tudor in this series. That's a plus. But at the same time, now they're going to face him a couple more times extra just for the fact that he is out there. One ball and one strike. Just outside one and two. And adding to the fact that the ERA is down, one of the reasons the Reds are about at the same figures after the 119 games is last year they had scored 590 runs. This year only 479. Popped up. Coming back, Pena. Does he have a play? Yes, he does. He got to it before he hit the screen. Sable fouls out. Good solid effort by Pena in retrieving that foul ball. A lot of room behind home plate and towards the dugouts. It narrows down as it gets down the lines. Big spacious ballpark here in St. Louis, but Pena immediately stayed with it. He found it. Never got in a huge hurry. Always a steady pace. You saw him look for a second to find out where he was. Then he felt that rubberized surface underneath his feet and made the play. One on and one out for Barry Larkin. Larkin batting 286. It's inside. The Cardinals starting the night 53 and 67. 17 and a half games back to the Mets. There Larkin stats. Larkin with 46 RBIs, 10 round trippers. Curveball caught the outside corner. Cal with a break at first, but it's going to be very difficult to steal against this battery. De Leon with a very short stride, a very small kick as far as raising that knee up. It's sort of a slide step, and Pena with one of the better throwing arms in all of the National League, all of baseball. One one pitch popped up on the infield. In foul territory, Pena makes the play. So after the walk to Daniels, Sabo and Larkin foul out to the catcher. And it'll be up to Eric Davis. Davis has played some great baseball for Cincinnati over the past six weeks. He's hit in 16 of his last 19 games and batted 360. The average is up to 278. He homered last night. 68 RBIs, 22 home runs. Inside and tight. Victory tonight would put the Reds four games over the 500 mark for the first time this season. The curve is low. Reds have won four of their last five and five of their last seven and seven of their last ten. They are 19 and 13 since the All-Star break and 27 and 16 since June the 30th. It was a rugged start for them, swing and a miss. Two balls and one strike. This is the first of a six-game road trip. We'll televise tonight, Sunday afternoon, and then Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday nights from the Steel City of Pittsburgh. Took something off of it. Davis way out in front. Here's a long one. Way back. And it is gone. Two nothing Cincinnati. Whitey Herzog 
himself about that one, Jay. After he got him chasing the high fastball and then the high slider, you could see Pena sitting outside just about belt high. He looked like he wanted to waste a ball upstairs. Pena got it out over the plate, challenged him with a fastball, didn't even go to the off speed in the dirt. And Eric Davis, this bud's for you. And a happy bunch of Reds over there. He banged this one, stays back of it, and he hit it up into the red seats. That was still going when it hit in up there. Here's Paul O'Neill batting 258. And nice way to get started for Norm Charlton. You betcha. Reds break on top here as Davis bangs out his 23rd home run of the year and now has 70 RBIs. Two balls and no strikes to O'Neill. the feeling that De Leon is a little unnerved by what just happened to him. And there's the walk to O'Neill, the second walk issued here in this first inning by De Leon. Johnny, I don't care who you are. You can't put that ball up in Davis's wheelhouse like that. Not the way he's swinging right now, no, Jay. Sir. And the fact is he had it out of the strike zone, and then you've got a position to waste one. I'm sure that uh, Jose knew his crime right immediately because he could hear it from the dugout. He didn't even have to hear it vocally, but he could hear it with the piercing eyes from the dugout. How can you make that pitch to the guy who's swinging the bat the best? Here's a Sasky. And Nick takes outside. Nick is hit in six of his last seven, batted 391 over that span. Batting average of 250, 50 RBIs, 12 homers. Sasky trying to catch up with the curveball. The Reds this season, when they have scored first, are 40 and 15. Some good odds in our favor. You betcha. Another good stop by Pena. Now, Pena, I mean, it's the fact that he's got to work with De Leon. And the fact that De Leon now with his fastball, he got two foul pop-ups with the catcher, but now he's sort of hesitating, challenging anybody with that fastball now, now trying to work the corners almost to the point that he's missing so badly he can't even take a swing. That caught the outside corner. It's two and two. With Eric Davis's homer last night and the one tonight, that's 101 in the season, the second best total in the National League. Reds have now hit a hundred or more homers every year since 52 except for the 81 strike year. And he strikes out a Sasky. The two run homer by Davis gives the Reds the lead. The lineups for the St. Louis Cardinals tonight has Vince Coleman leading off in left field. Batting second Willie McGee in center field. Pedro Guerrero bats third and plays first base. Tom Bernanski is the right fielder batting fourth. Terry Pendleton bats fifth at third base. Ozzie Smith is in the sixth spot playing shortstop. Jose Oquendo is the second baseman batting seventh. Tony Pena works behind the plate batting eighth. And Jose De Leon is the pitcher batting ninth. Defensively for the Reds, it's Cal Daniels, Eric Davis, and Paul O'Neill in the outfield. Chris Sable, Barry Larkin, Jeff Treadway, Nick Asaski around the infield. Bo Diaz behind the plate. And the left-hander, Norm Charlton, on the mound. And he has been staked to a two-run lead. And looks like he likes a hat that fits down around his ears. <laughs> oh, looks Jim a little Cotton like looks. old kitty cat, doesn't he? Jim Cott. I hope he can pitch like Jim Cott. Oh, Cotton. yeah. Vince Coleman leads it off, leading the league in stolen bases with 63. The speedster batting 268. And Charlton is low with his first offering. Charlton, a 25-year-old lefty, born in Fort Polk, Louisiana. As Johnny told you, he grew up down in San Antonio, Texas. A graduate of Rice University in Houston. A smart young man. You don't roll through Rice in less than 
four years like he did. I think he got through in three years with an accelerated program. And he should know what he's doing on the mound. He, in his last seven starts down in Nashville, he was 4-0. And this would have been his regular turn as far as pitching if he'd been down in Nashville. They played in Oklahoma City the last four games and saw a lot of the guys heading to the plane this morning as I left Oklahoma City. Here's the 1-1. One -one. Up the middle. And Coleman is on. That's one, this, that's one guy that he would like to have started out getting out. Yep. Fact is, with a 2 0 lead, it will not stop the Cardinals' base runners from running and a little more pressure on Norm. Coleman, in his career, has stolen 32 of 45 attempts against the Cardinals. It's Willie McGee at the plate. Excuse me, against the uh, Reds. I think I said against the Cardinals. McGee. With a 290 batting average, 44 RBIs, has a couple of home runs. Now, I said Charlton doesn't have a very good move, Johnny, and it's because of that big, slow leg kick. Well, as long as he doesn't bring that front foot, the right foot, past his knee, he can either come to first base or go home. And. You can bet that the umpire over at first will be checking that very closely, as will Vince Coleman. Vince gets a little lead now, and basically all that is is to check Charlton out and see when he will come over. He's going to get a little bit more, and he'll he'll be a one late way lead to start with, knowing that he's going to come back no matter what Charlton does. Charlton leading the American Association with 161 strikeouts. He won three of his last five starts for Nashville. Another toss over. Charlton, an All-American at Rice, the number one draft pick of the Expos in June 84. He came from the Expos in March of 86 with Tim Barker in the Wayne Krenchicki deal. Another toss over. Closer play. The first base umpire is Gary Darling, one of the young rookie umpires in the National League. Veteran Bruce Frumming at second tonight and Terry Tate at third with Jerry Davis behind the plate. Pete Rose looking on from the dugout. Outside. One ball and one strike. McGee. This fella can really move. He's third in the National League with 142 hits and on a pace for 200 hits for the second time. Led the National League with 216 in 85. One ball and two strikes. from San Francisco originally in the Yankees organization and a swing and a miss and the strikeout a big strikeout now with Pedro a chance for the double play take a look at Norm Charlton's move well, that's a good down slider right there. Excellent movement on that slider. Huh? Got the fastball, and he'll throw a split-fingered fastball as well. That's his off-speed pitch. And the thing about a split-fingered pitch is if you use it as a changeup, and it's not going to do anything if it just tumbles up there at a high rate of speed because then the hitter is not fooled. Guerrero is batting 294. Sabo and in time. Put a star on it. You betcha. Sabo going to the line, throwing himself out there, getting the ball, makes the play in time. Two gone with Coleman at second. Well, this is why this young man is the top candidate for the rookie, rookie of the year. Pedro was blessed, not blessed with the greatest of speed, partly because of the knee injury. 
see the diving Sabo with the presence of mind to know he cannot get Coleman. It's interesting to talk and listen to Sabo. He knows the hitters, knows their speed, and knows how he has to gun it over there. Save his, saves his arm. That time he had to hurry. Here's Tom Brunanski. He's batting 263. Brunanski has 67 RBIs and 18 home runs. Earlier this year, he had a 19 game hitting streak. That was the longest streak of his career. This right handed hitting outfielder acquired back in April in a trade with the Minnesota Twins for second baseman Tommy Herr. Let's see how he changes his motion now. Instead of the slow move, let's see how quick he goes. Brunanski is going to call time with Coleman down at second base. He has now changed his rhythm and he has worked hard on getting that move. That's probably a report you had Jay about his slow move coming home. But watch this now as he has changed and he's really rushing it to get to the plate. It gets by and Coleman will trot the third. Pass ball. Let's take a look real quick, Jay, at Norm Charlton. And this is the problem with catching a pitcher that you have not seen all year long is the movement on the pitch. That time he even changed a little bit more, and you can see the disappointment in the fact that the pitch gets away from him. It really doesn't matter. A base hit the outfield is going to score Vince Coleman. His job is still to get Tom Bernanski. Two balls and no strikes to Bernanski. Had the game-winning home run and triple in last night's win. Foul back. Brunanski, incidentally, is the only National League outfielder playing at the moment who is a regular who has not committed an error in 1988. Very solid. Very solid throughout his play as he was in Minnesota last year. Coleman shaking things up down there at third. Trying to get the youngster rattled, see if he would balk. He stepped off. Corsabo has to play deep against Bernanski. Chris right now standing near the bag, but he'll back up as soon as the pitch is made, and actually he probably should be back sooner. There he goes. And another foul. Count even up at two and two. You ask around St. Louis, Johnny, where would the Cardinals be if they hadn't made their Bernanski her deal? Oh, my. <laughs> Very little punch in that lineup. Now, this is a critical pitch for Bo. Calling a pitch that he's still not sure of the break and what the youngster's arm motion or hand motion will do at the last second. Will he call the split finger or will he try that diving slider down and in? Well, he came with an off speed offering that's outside. It's three and two. hit 20 or more homers in each of his six full big league seasons. He's become a very popular performer here in St. Louis. Now Charlton has gone to the stretch and fouled away and will do it again. Pete Rose his third full season as the Reds manager. Whitey Herzog he signed through 1990 here as the field boss. New York beat Seattle five to three. And a strike. That caught the outside corner. Good job by Charlton. After an inning, Reds lead it two to nothing. Well, the Reds on top two to nothing via the home run. And Norm Charlton had a little chat with Scotty Breeden. And he probably is talking about what kind of pitch he threw to Tom Bernanski. And let's take a look at that pitch. Bernanski wanted to leave. It was the slider he gave up on. And that backdoored him. He tried to get the walk, but he knew it. He didn't argue. And Diaz leads it off in the second inning. The curveball is in there from De Leon for a strike. Bo's average at 229. He's been hitting a little better of late. and two to Diaz tomorrow afternoon Tom Browning goes for number 12 he's 11 and four Greg Matthews back on the roster here in St. Louis two and two 
Sunday. We'll tell you about the pitching pairing in a moment. Way outside, and Diaz looks bad as De Leon gets his second strikeout. On Sunday, it's probably going to be Tim Burtz's, who's one and two, against Scott Terry, who's three and three. They have Rio listed as a possibility for Sunday, Johnny, but that tendonitis problem is tough. Well, I talked to Jose in the clubhouse, and he was very disappointed. I mean, he's very sad that he's not going to be able to make that start, but he's talking about the point inside of his elbow where if you bend it, it's sort of that point just above, about an inch and a half above the bottom part of that elbow, and it's been very sore. Jeff Tretway has hit in nine of his last ten games and batted 324 over that span. He's 258 on the year. This is popped to the left side. Pendleton and Smith on the run, and Pendleton over the shoulder. He does that so well, Ted. Yes, he does. He's one of the very best at chasing down foul balls in that territory. And I guess he gets a lot of practice down the line here. The Reds up two to nothing. Pendleton being congratulated by Ozzie Smith. And from the swing, ball down and in, popped up. Yeah, you've got to run. You don't know which way the wind's going to take it, foul or fair. Ozzie coming over, but Pendleton only looking at the baseball. He's calling it, and it, he took it off the chest into the glove. Gold glove last year. Charlton swings and comes up empty. Detroit off to a five to nothing lead in the fifth inning against the White Sox. Did you see the way they won the ball game last night? Incredible. I mean, it really was incredible. They, they came from behind. Reedus lost the ball. That. I mentioned Reedus. He was just traded to the Pittsburgh Pirates from Mike Diaz. He lost the ball in the lights. Then the second baseman slipped behind second base and dropped the ball. And then Bergman just went ahead and left the ballpark. <laughs> Carlton strikes out. They're down one, two, three. We played an inning and a half, and the Reds lead two to nothing. Bottom of the second inning, Reds leading two to nothing. We want to tell you about a great back-to-school giveaway that the Reds are having Friday, August 26th, when the Cardinals come into play. It's Borden's Notebook Night, and the first 10,000 fans 16 and under will receive a Reds three-ring binder. It's just perfect for organizing your school papers. You want to get there and get it, and of course, you might be the only kid in school, then you can show off. Start your school year <laughs> on a positive note with the Reds Notebook. Friday, August 26th, thanks to our friends at Borden's Dairy. So you run that school. Right? Absolutely. 16 and under the first 10,000. So get there and get it. That's a nice gift. Here's Terry Pendleton leading it off in the second. Pendleton in the right field. So the leadoff man has reached in both innings for the Cardinals. Coleman with a single to start the first. Now Pendleton to the right side to start the second. Pendleton batting 254 on the evening. And Pendleton hurt most of the year out with him, disabled us with that full hamstring. He has stolen bases in his career. This year, he is only two for four. Not running nearly as much as he used to, and boy, did the Cardinals miss Pendleton early on. Ozzie Smith, the whiz at the dish, batting 269, leading the Cardinals with 65 runs scored. the Guerrero deal there were a lot of rumors that the Cardinal hierarchy was trying to shop Smith to the New York Yankees. Yes he hasn't been happy batting sixth either they just moved him down there Whitey thought he'd have a chance to run batting sixth and his contact he figured would give him a chance to maybe drive in some runs but Johnny may we get a good look at the bat that Ozzie is using tonight. It's a new bat he's just been using for two days. You know whose name it's on it? <laughs> uh, Ty Cobb, uh, Pete Rose. Pedro Guerrero. <laughs> he picked up one of Guerrero's bats apparently yesterday, and he's uh, not giving it back up. <laughs> well, you know, sometimes if you just pick up a bat and it feels good to you, take it up there and swing. That's right. And especially if you haven't been hitting the ball well. You might want to feel something different at the plate, maybe a little heavier. He's starting it out front, and now as he starts to wait on the pitch, he starts to bring his bring his hands back closer and back to him. This is popped up, back out of play. I would doubt that Pedro Guerrero uses the same ounceage as 
Ozzy Smith, although a lot of home run hitters use lighter, uh, lighter bats. I, I, I used yeah. about 32 and a half ounces. Who used the biggest bat you ever saw, Johnny? Well, Bobby Bonds had a 37-37. <laughs> My. He had the greatest wrist, I tell you. That's some lumber. Isn't oh, it? yeah. I mean, you know, the torque that it would create once he made contact. Like a springboard. And inside the bag, Pendleton will be waved home. Ozzy has a double, and the Cardinals are on the board. It's 2-1. to one. Smith getting his 36th RBI of the season. as though they're just setting on the fastball of Charlton, the hard stuff. Pendleton looking for the fastball on the first pitch, got it, lined it into right field. Ozzy having to start that bat a little earlier. This ball right at the belt, and he pulls it down the line, and there's nothing to do here to try to get Pendleton for Cal because he's not sure how it's going to come off that wall. And he's got to play it carefully to keep Ozzy from getting three. This is Jose Kendall with a shot down the line foul. Oh, Kendall with a lot of length on that one. Foul against the wall down at the 335 mark. Oh, Kendall batting 275. The secret weapon, as he's called. He's played every position except catch for the Cardinals. This fella is an extremely talented and dedicated ball player. Smith has stolen 42 bases in 48 attempts. Last year he set the shortstop record with 43 stolen bases. He's tried to steal third base five times. He's been successful four of those five. And Okendo, you would have thought, would be going the other way with the man at second base, but the pitch to his liking and stood up ripping. I you almost figured that he'd be going to right field in the first pitch he pulls foul. Well, Okendo's liable to hit it anywhere. He sprays it all over the place. Now he was trying to go to the right side there. One ball and two strikes. And I wouldn't be surprised if Okendo doesn't get him over or he doesn't try to steal while Okendo's at the plate to Maybe steal against Pena. He just about had Charlton Red at that time. And now both Larkin and Treadway have moved in a little bit, although Larkin is playing the other uh, Treadway is playing the other way and deep. Larkin knocks it down. The throw is not in time. Well, that's Ozzie Smith. Ozzie Smith created that. He got the shortstop to move in. And Barry was moving to second base, couldn't get back to his normal position as he tried to get back. He thought he was going to have to dive for the ball. The ball got there quicker than he expected. As a result, he was only able to stumble a little bit right there. See how that knee caught? And the ball actually came up short on him. This is amazing that he was able to even come this close to throwing Okendo out. He would have had me. What year? Any year? 68 through 83. <laughs> Tony Pena. That's an infield single for Okendo. Three hits in a row. Still nobody out. A run home. And here is Pena batting 251. Sabo goes to the bag. And they can only get two. The Cardinals turned to triple play here the other night. And the Reds had a possibility there for a moment. Boy, just a good slide by Okendo. It certainly looked like there was a great opportunity, and Jeff probably talking to himself. He stayed on the outfield side of the bag had he come across the other way, but that's the decision you have to make from the throw. Sabo had to ride himself. Throw, high throw, and he's trying to get out of the way, but Okendo is just on top of him. There's Okendo. One strike to De Leon, batting 135, has a couple of RBIs. That's high. De Leon is fifth in the National League with 145 strikeouts. That misses high, two balls and one strike. Oh, 
many of you enjoyed the Pete and Johnny show along the network line tonight. Pete with some very interesting comments. Probably his best show, along with myself. We put together a fine effort with Rob Reichley, our producer. Another good job and effort by him. Some spotlights on Ken Griffey, Ronnie Oster, and we had a talk with John Franco. Pete that, had some interesting comments about a, his ball club. That's always interesting, a visit to, with Franco. Well, John is always uh, forthright, and he's always available, and he's having a great year. Payoff pitch coming. Charlton does not want to walk his counterpart, and he strikes him out. Strikeout number three. Cardinals get three hits, come up with a run. Two to one, Cincinnati. Ernie Hayes, the organist here, playing Country Roads. For all you fans down in West Virginia, hope it's cooled off a little bit. The Reds lead it two to one. Well, Jay, I uh, talked about Rob Reichley, our producer for the Pete and Johnny show, and he's standing back up here. Shannon's watching you. Just want to make sure that prove that you're in town. One of our talented young people from <laughs> multimedia and WLWT in Cincinnati. And we've had a lot of fun putting those shows together, and we hope everybody's enjoyed it. It's been able to see it. And if you haven't, you've missed a lot. Maybe you could call up and order it, and you can run it every week. We had the All-Star Show and some interesting comments. Cal Daniels, who walked and scored back in the first. Reds up two to one as we move into the third inning. Fastball inside. Way inside and high. Well, I'm sure that you folks in the greater Cincinnati area are aware of some discontent regarding some of the minority owners of the Reds in regard to Reds president Marge Schott. Marge took a pretty good stand, though. Oh, a strong stand, I think, because she made it quite clear uh, what the situation is. She says if she keeps getting challenged, if they don't like the way things are going to go, she just buy them out. The shot. I think everybody know uh, the situation is. She, of course, met with baseball commissioner Peter Uberoth recently. Thank Marge also for hosting the Reds rally out of her house. It was a lot of fun, huh? Yeah, it was just a lot. It was very hot, but we had a great turnout. And of course, the proceeds go to the Children's Hospital. Had some uh, an auction and uh, Reds uniform with all the signatures on it. Went for thirty-one hundred dollars and boy, raised some money and all for a good worthwhile cause, the Children's Hospital. Three balls and one strike. Three and two, Johnny. Stories like this, and uh, this kind of thing being in the papers and talked about, of course, uh, I don't think they have very much effect on the fellows who are on the field, really. No, not really. They don't worry no. about that stuff. You got to go out and play. And she do your pays job them to everywhere. play, and that's what their job is to go out there and not worry about it. Let them take care of their own business up there, and their duty is on the field. Right. Full count. It's not like a George Steinbrenner who's in the clubhouse. Oh, no. Has control of the newspaper. Strikeout. That's number four for De Leon. And what a great pitch. Do fastball, fastballs, fastballs, fastballs. Got him to three and two, and then all of a sudden drops that hook on him. Mesmerized him, didn't he? Oh, he is tough. He's a tough right-hander. I'll tell you, he gets you off speeding and off stride. Sabo fouled out in the first inning. Went for a high fastball. Couldn't catch up with it. Fouled out of play. It was interesting after the Cardinals made the deal with Los Angeles. Tudor getting out to L.A. and getting a victory. 
Guerrero got his first hit as a Cardinal here last night as we tell you this buds for you and we're happy to have you with us tonight. That uh, Jack Clark had some comments in the St. Louis papers today as that gets by. Clark said he couldn't understand the whole deal that he would have played for a lot less than what they're paying Guerrero they, to get Guerrero and to make that deal they signed Guerrero to a new three year contract for nearly six million dollars and they also signed Bob Horner so combined seven point one five million or something like that Jack said I would have been happier look at that for ball another one just like whoops, Cal Daniels saw and he made a lot of sense yeah and a lot of mistakes were made I think they're very aware of the fact that there were a lot of mistakes made by Jack Clark by his agents by Dal Maxville by the St. Louis Cardinals and well this ball club has a chance to finish last and that would be I guess the last ball club to win a pennant and then finish last was the California Angels and yeah, I'm not sure this wouldn't be the first National League club to ever have that happen to them. Boy, De Leon has got a meeting out of his hand right now here in the third inning Larkin fouled out in the first one strike to him. key to De Leon is that fastball and that's the good velocity on the fastball which sets up those off speed pitches that one in the dirt one ball and one strike the only pitch he's really gotten in the heart of the plate was the curveball it's such a good one with a good bite and off speed that it's so effective but that fastball he keeps showing people the only pitch he's really got over the middle of the plate was to Eric Davis. Stranded at third in the first. Coleman, a devastating force over the years with his speed. He's bet, hit better than 300 lifetime in his career against Cincinnati. Fair ball, a double. Now Coleman is two for two. He's been getting it up in the strike zone. First pitch hitting, as did Pendleton, and there's the breaking ball that's upstairs. Anything up in the strike zone to these guys, they're going to be whacking at it. Now he's got to worry about Vince Coleman, who has stolen third base 18 out of 20 times. Lou Brock told me he's the best that ever played at stealing third, and that's high praise. McGee on the ground. Coleman on to third, one out. And McGee moves him along. And it'll be Guerrero. There is Vince Coleman, went to school down at Florida AM. He hit a career high 289 and 87. Guerrero rounded out in the first. at least the fly ball to tie it. See that bat? It's the one that he's, he and Ozzie are using that black bat. Maybe the Worth Company, I believe. Yeah, there's a lot of different bats on the market. Oh, yeah. It used to be the traditional H&B, the Louisville Slugger. And, of course, Adirondack came in. Two balls and no strikes. Charlton and the Reds leading two to one, but the lead in jeopardy is that's a strike at the letters, and Guerrero looks back at Jerry Davis in surprise. Guerrero was on the DL for a short time. Went down for a very short time of rehabilitation. Dancing around down there at third, outside. 
three and one. Well, any ball in the infield is going to be tough to get Coleman at the plate. It would have to be a shot right at Sabo. Because the rest of the infield has to give the run. And a foul. Some of this crowd. About 35,000. Spaces around here, Jay. I don't know if they're worried about the weather, but there's a lot of empty seats throughout the stands. All of course they're disappointed. And yeah, when you look they at were the record, record that's three the million. Well, they're going to sell over three million tickets, but they won't get that many through the turnstiles. A walk to Guerrero. And that's the first walk issued by Charlton. Chicago beat Atlanta eight to seven. Houston's leading Pittsburgh in the seventh inning, three to one. And here is Brunansky, who struck out to end the first. Coleman's over there at third, and Guerrero at first. And Charlton would like the double play. Now the first pitch is usually the most effective pitch. You need to get that fastball down, a little sinker. Get that ground ball. He's outside with it. Mm, that just missed low. Two balls and no strikes. We're in the third. Cardinals have a run on five hits. The Reds, two runs on one hit. The homer by Davis in the first. There's a strike on the outside corner. Nansky is grounded into 11 double plays, the most on this ball club. And Guerrero's there at first, and he doesn't run very well anymore. Three and one. is inside. That'll probably get a visit from Scotty Breeden. Walks to Guerrero and Bernanski, and here comes Breeden. The base is loaded for Terry Pendleton. Well, they really pitched effectively in a lot of ways, trying to get the ball down, get the ground ball, and also trying to pitch around the big men in their order. Pendleton hit him hard the other way his first time up, and Scotty just telling him just to relax here. Going to tell him the ball hit hard back to him. He can come home. Try to get the one, two, three double play. Jerry Davis will go out and try to break it up. Davis was born right here in St. Louis. Lives now in Appleton, Wisconsin. And he says, Come on, boys, let's play a little baseball here. Singled and scored in the second inning. There's a strike. And of course, with Bernanski at first, who has good speed, he's only 13 bases this year. Sasky will play behind him. And he'll take a hard ground ball to turn the double play because Bernanski really goes down to second and turns himself loose at that infielder. One ball and one strike. Is that lightning? I believe it's lightning around the ballpark. The wind has changed direction somewhat. Yeah, not much wind at all now. It picks up and goes towards home. Down the line. Coleman comes home. Here's Guerrero, and the Cardinals take the lead three to two. A double by Terry Pendleton, his 46th and 47th RBIs of the year. And you'll
Posey, the pitch right in the middle of the plate. Pendleton turns on it, and a little action in the bullpen for the Cincinnati Reds as Coleman trots home. He's followed by Guerrero, and the throw back in gives Charlton more problems as Pendleton at second and Bernanski at third. Ozzie Smith doubled and got an RBI in the second. Strike on the outside corner. Rob Dibble warms up in the bullpen for the Reds. Dibble, a big, strong right-hander from Connecticut. One ball and one strike. Smith hit 303 last year. Bernanski's at third. Pendleton out at second. Smith right down on the end of that bat. Inside. Diaz keeps it close. Young Norm Charlton. Stake to a 2 nothing lead has seen the Cardinals take the lead here three to two. Cardinals have out hit the Reds six to one. short left. So a Kendo will bat with two on and two out and two runs home. Okendo got the infield single on a shot deep in the hole back in the second inning. Houston Astros in the last two ball games, but they came out smoking tonight. The harder Charlton threw, the harder they hit it. And it'll be Dibble. Score five to two, and we'll be back right after these messages. Five to two ball game here in Bush Memorial Stadium as the Cardinals have scored one in the second, have four runs in here in the fourth inning. And Rob Dibble on the mound, and Rob with a record of one win and one loss. 2.40 ERA in 30 innings. He has pitched in the Reds rotation 19 games. This is his 20th, and Rob was voted Baseball America as the hardest throwing right hander, the big best fastball in Triple A. He was the Reds' number one draft choice in the secondary phase of the June 83 draft. Two and four at Nashville last year. And Dibble can bring it, as Johnny indicated to you. Still see some of that lightning off in the distance. Uh, five to two. St. Louis leads it. Charlton goes two and two thirds. He's been charged with five runs on seven hits. He struck out three and walked two. Tony Pena 
Grounded into a double play in the second. Pena who started wearing glasses last year to going to the optometrist and realizing he had some problems. Still hasn't hit that much better over here. They expected him to be a much better offensive catcher than he has been. Well, they got him for his defense as well. He is a former gold glove winner. But they thought sure that he would hit with some average. It's a big ballpark and a tough ballpark. Runner goes. Five ball to the right side out of play. Well, as the fans of the game well know, they gave up a great deal to get Pena. <laughs> Andy Van Slyke, Mike Lavalier, who might be as fine a defensive catcher as there is in the game, and uh, also a fellow named Dunn, a young pitcher who had a very fine year last year. He's not done quite as well this season for the Pirates. 0 oh 2 to Pena. Down the way. Cleveland leading Kansas City 4 to 2 in the eighth inning. Montreal is at L.A. later. Just outside. California, Baltimore, 1-1 one, one in the fifth. Houston leads Pittsburgh 4-1 in the seventh. Texas, 3-0 over Minnesota in the fifth. New York at San Diego later. New York, 5-3 over Seattle. That's a final. Pitch out. That's a ball. Yep. He never stopped. Yep. He's got to stop. He's trying to argue it, but it is going on. normal speed on it Johnny well let you be the umpire he was trying to do a pitch out takes a little more than that they want a certain stop like this one right there and out into center field just behind second Larkin makes the play the Cardinals come up with four to take a 5 2 lead after three We'll start the fourth inning as you look at some of the big crowd here. Davis hit his third homer in the last four games. A two-run shot in the first inning with Daniels scoring in front of him. Outside from Jose De Leon, who has struck out five. Walked one. Or walked two, excuse me. It's a little high, 2-0. Oh. Davis has got the average now, Johnny, to 280. Isn't that unbelievable? Yes, it is. Kind of start he had. But, of course, you have to look at Tony Gwynn. He's leading the league in hitting. Yep. Tied for the league with Gerald Perry after hitting 246 early in the season. He's saying, what's wrong with Tony Gwynn? There he is, the real Tony Gwynn. And stood up. Let's see, it's up the middle. Rather a lackluster performance by De Leon, De Leon going for that baseball. Yeah, it was a shock treatment. He thought he was hit a lot harder. He didn't know the bat was broken. Hit it right off the end of the bat, and he kind of flinched. The first thing you do, like a line drive, is like a changeup. I think it really surprised him. He's never been known for his great feeling, as you can see. He stands straight up and falls over to the left a little bit, so he's never really in great fielding position, but you almost figure Ozzie's going to die for it and catch it. Davis with the leadoff single. Here's O'Neill taking inside. Paul walked in the first inning. Over to first. Ball is high. 
You'll see a lot of off-speed pitches to Paul O'Neill. He's such a good fastball hitter. Try to off-speed him, but both times he's gotten behind in the count to Paul. First time, of course, he walked him. He's just going to showcase that fastball like a pretty girl. Just shows you a little bit of that leg as she's <laughs> just enough to get, get you excited yeah. and you think he's going to throw you a good one. <laughs> and he gets the outside corner with that one. Three and one. And they're going to get busy down in the Cardinal pen. That's Costello, the right-hander. Runner goes and up the middle and going on to third is Davis. They're at the corners with none out. But you have to what you have to do. You have to be patient with De Leon. He's going to show you pitches around the edges and if he doesn't hit it he's going to have to sooner or later come back with that fastball. Pena out to talk to him. Take a look at the O'Neill swing. Fastball right out over the plate ripped into center field. McGee plays deep. He knows he has chances. Eric's great speed just coasted him into third. Isaski struck out in the first inning. The Reds now with a threat here in the fourth. Curveball out of play. It's a hanging curveball, but it's such off speed it just never gets there. It looks like a softball. It's so big, but it just keeps hanging and stopping and slowing up as it goes. And the Reds now, as they get towards the bottom of the lineup, need to think about getting somebody down on the bullpen, and they certainly have. You're going to get some somebody up to warm up. Oh, and he took something off that one, and he's in the driver's seat 0-2, and, and it's Frankie Williams down there. did get a piece of it. Eighth inning now Houston leading Pittsburgh four to one. Seattle over the Yankees five to one in the sixth inning. Here it is five to two St. Louis top of the fourth. The sacrifice fly effective. Carries the gap to two. That's RBI number 51 for Nick Asaski. Diaz bats with one on and one out. He struck out to start the second inning. out there on the hill. He certainly can be. He's been effective throughout the season for this ball club. He's given this ball club a chance to score some runs. Eight and eight record, however. And on the ground, Ozzy goes on to second. Get the lead man. He has 
at first for Treadway with two gone. Treadway fouled out to Pendleton for the second out in the second inning. I think Ozzie was real happy with Okendo not trying to turn the double play with Bo running. He was talking to him just finally just stopped talking to him. Well, Smith is like a manager on the field and off the field for that matter. He makes 200. Thousand over two million. Two million two hundred thousand a year. Playing shortstop. St. Louis Cardinals. Curveball is just outside. And a strike. Well, that's how you pitch to be effective in the major leagues. You have to be able to throw that breaking ball over at any time in the count. We've seen that at pitch at three and two, so it's no problem throwing it two and zero. Oh. Fastball fouled out of play. The fellow who can throw you that curve in this rotation here and the off-speed stuff in any situation is John Tudor. In this ballpark, it seemed like the pattern we'd like to do to some of these hitters just throw that high fastball out over the plate. Let them try to hit it out there in the gap. Popped up. Ozzie Smith has a beat on it. He makes the play. Reds come up with a run, and after three and a half, it's five to three, St. Louis. Today's game is brought to you in part by General Tire. Get on your generals and go. And by Lens Crafters. Quality eyeglasses in about an hour. You're watching Reds Baseball on the Cincinnati Reds Television Network. And along with John Bench, Jay Randolph here at Bush Stadium, St. Louis. 5-3, the Cardinals. De Leon, who struck out in the second inning, stands in in the fourth against Dibble. Slashed foul. Charlton, two and two thirds, five runs, seven hits, struck out three and walked two. Dibble came on to get Pena to end the third. Fastball is low. Strike two as De Leon chased one way outside. Baltimore leading California two to one. Fourth inning. Texas three nothing over Minnesota in the sixth. New York beats Seattle five to three. And this is foul out of play. Love to watch this man's motion, Jay. Looking from the third base side. A lot of arms, a lot of legs from a big man. Look how he gets the ball out of his glove, takes it back just like an outfielder would. And that's the way you get the most velocity out of it. Just outside with that one, two and two. He wears that cutout sleeve on the right arm to give him uh, freedom there. There it is. That just missed outside. Two, two sliders to the pitcher. <laughs> you would rather have him just wing that fastball and then get it over. With. Well, if he's swinging wildly at the breaking ball, you can throw it. Yeah. On the ground to Treadway. One gone. Detroit five to four over Chicago in the seventh inning. Leading New York in the second game of their doubleheader, five to one in the sixth. Baltimore three to one over California in the fifth. Well, here's Coleman. He is two for two, 
as his average up to 271. Doubled and scored in the third, singled and stranded at third in the first. Can't catch up with that one, though. Well, the Reds could use a one, two, three inning. Looking in at Bow. That caught the outside corner. Good pitch. Nibbles out in front, 0 2. Just joining us, Eric Davis, a two run homer in the first, got the Reds the lead. Cardinals got one in the second and then banged out four in the third. Reds got one back in the fourth. It's five to three. Cardinals and Coleman is out of there. First strikeout for Dibble. Good fastballs away and then the backdoor slider. Take a look. Starts it outside, breaks it right there. Coleman, when you see his hands drop, has no chance of swinging the bat. And Jerry Davis says, I'm not going to give you another chance. Here's McGee. He takes a strike. McGee has struck out and grounded out. And just outside. Well, Johnny, it's really very pleasant here in the ballpark now. The temperature is dropped throughout the evening. This is wonderful. As cool a night as we've had at the ballpark in a long time. When we started proceedings here this evening, the temperature was about 92. And if you get a breeze in this ballpark, it comes right through the open areas back behind home, about back behind center field. So it's well ventilated. That just misses low, two and two. And a breeze blowing in from center field over towards right. Well, now it's wheeled around and blowing out. Free commercial there for the Clarion Hotel just across the street. These Reds have stayed there a few times. Clarion Tower, which can be seen from our broadcast position and for most of the camera positions here. Full count. dugout in the ninth Houston leading Pittsburgh four to one earlier today as we told you Chicago gets by Atlanta eight to seven another foul out of play Detroit five to four over Chicago in the seventh. Milwaukee and Minnesota are four four in the eighth. Cleveland leads Kansas City four to two in the ninth. And we've got a light rain just beginning to fall now. Very light mist. And a walk to McGee. The first pass given up by Dibble. Charlton had walked two. And Pedro Guerrero, who's grounded out and walked. And Guerrero wearing number 28. When he came over here, he had number 43. He said it was too much, too heavy. <laughs> and Dan Quisenberry, who was wearing number 28, said, no problem. I'd be happy to give it up. Guerrero wearing 28. And now Quisenberry, number 40. Runner goes. Ball gets through. McGee will go on to third. It'll be a stolen base. Number 38, Jay. And an error on the catcher. 38 stolen bases from McGee in 43 attempts. Didn't hesitate. Bo knows that he needs a perfect throw. The ball into the runner. And 
Redway had no chance of making that play. One ball and no strikes to Guerrero. Make it two and oh. That's a little high. Three balls and no strikes. on deck. 5-3 St. Louis. Guerrero walks. They're at the corners for Bernanski who has struck out and walked. He later scored when he walked in the third inning. Swing bouncer is Sasky touches the bag through four innings at Bush Stadium. The Cardinals lead it five to three. We go to the midway point. It's the Cards leading the Reds five to three. And talking about the Reds, well, it's time to get your team picture. Saturday, August 27th, the Reds host the Cardinals at 7:05. A big weekend. First a binder, and now the picture. It's Maxwell House Coffee Team Picture Night, and everyone in, in attendance will receive a free color picture of this year's team. It's a great chance to add this special item to your current collection or start a new one with this year's team picture. It's always popular at the date. Saturday, August 27th, Reds and the Cardinals and Team Picture Night, thanks to Maxwell House Coffee. Here's Oster batting for Dibble, starting things off as we move into the fifth inning. Ron Oster batting 191. Dibble did a nice job. He went one and a third. No runs, no hits. He struck out one and walked two. Foul outside of first. As a pinch hitter. Oster is nine for 47. just as an overall stat Jay right and out into left is it going to drop it does Smith made a valiant effort to get there and Oster has a leadoff single here in the fifth and now one for two as a pinch hitter one for three excuse me and the rain starting to pick up a little bit still very light not enough to stop it this contest just a very light mist as we mentioned Cal Daniels has walked and scored and struck out hit for Oster the fourth for the Reds and Costello gets up again and starts to warm up for the Cardinals down the right side a few umbrellas starting to pick up throughout the stands drops getting a little bigger there's th lightning and thunder over in the west and I guess it's just catching part of that told us this storm was going to be coming that it might go off to the north side at the moment it's not raining hard enough to, to cause a problem they have the honeycomb effect under the astroturf here that water goes right through the turf and sucked down underneath into a drainage system one ball and one strike and Outside. of course they have the Vince Coleman tarp here they sure do. Uh, Roy Alfers can probably get a shot of that. It runs down the first base side, and Coleman got tied up in that thing. There it is. Just comes right up and motorizes right on out. Had he been healthy, 
results of the World Series with the Royals might have been different. Or if Don Dickinger. <laughs> well, there were some other things that happened in that inning. I don't happen to be one that thinks that, that think that Dickinger really caused the loss. Swing and a miss. Daniels strikes out for the second time. And that is strikeout number six for De Leon. There was also a ball dropped in foul ground and a fast ball in that situation over in Kansas City. Five to three. Cardinals lead it. Sabo has fouled out and struck out. Out of play down the left side. tough going for the Cardinals when they lost Coleman against Kansas City though Johnny and also very tough for them when they were without Clark against Minnesota. But De Leon has been very very tough when he needed to be. He struck out half a dozen now and he's out in front 0 and 2 against Sabo. Seven. And it'll be up to Barry Larkin. Larkin is fouled out and grounded out. Johnny, there are murmurs. Barry Larkin. If you call them rumors, call them murmurs. <laughs> Leon Durham may get back in the uniform before the year is over, depending on who you talk to. He seems to think he could be ready in a well, that could be ten days back. Yep. Yeah. They may wait till the first of September before they make a roster move or if someone got hurt. Uh-oh, look out. Larkin swings, misses, and loses the bat as this rain now begins to come down rather hard. See the rain right there by the 1987 pennant Need a little work on the roof there John <laughs> yeah accumulated pretty quick I don't think that was there just from this little shower I don't know coming down pretty good now though well we need to get the daily on here popped up coming over is Pena he can't get there it's back about six rows Those umbrellas can be dangerous on a fly ball. You can get, uh, you get a little uh, poke in the eye there if you're not careful. My grandfather back home in the hills of West Virginia used to call them bumper shoots. <laughs> bumper shoot. Bumper shoot. He used to take his umbrella. He walked to work every day. Quite often he'd take his bumper shoot with him. Two pitch jammed him back and out of play. Did you wear those five buckle galoshes or I had some five buckle galoshes, I sure did. He had another term I remember uh, for uh, suspenders. Called them galluses. Huh. <laughs> I don't know where those names came from. Maybe they're just what folks call them way back when. Oster led off with a single, still at first with two gone, and 0-2 the count to Larkin. And another foul out of play. Now Laura's here tonight with her umbrella, along with Pat Berry, the weatherman. We can blame him for bringing this weather over, I guess. He wouldn't like that. <laughs> Steps off. There's 
Oster. We need a hanging curveball about right now. Fastball fouled out of play down the right side. Well hit. Davis banged out his 23rd home run in the first with Daniel scoring in front of him. Reds got a run when Davis scored after he had singled leading off the fourth and Saski got him home with a sacrifice fly. Eric on deck. get a chance to bat another 0 2 offering down the left side and trouble in the corner and Oster should score he will and going for third and in there is Larkin well Coleman had a problem down there the ball got away from him and it is a triple and the lead is cut to one saw a little bit of the wetness on this turf. It looked like that ball kind of scooted a little bit. Barry did not hit it extremely hard. He hit it solid. And we see the swing. And now he stumbles coming out. See that little water fly up and it kind of scooted. Now it gets by the other way and with momentum of Coleman going towards the line. That'll be the night for De Leon surprisingly Jay. Well they put the hook on him real quick didn't they. Costello is coming in and he will pitch to Eric Davis but first we'll take this time out. Five to four as the Reds battle back against the Cardinals and the young John Costello goes to the mound. This fellow has been very tough. Never mind. Costello is three and one. He's pitched 27 and two thirds inning, and he has an ERA of 0.98. Johnny. Wow. He's not even listed in the book. No. Nope. He's not listed as far far, far as uh, their farm club or their non-roster players. So he's a new man on the club and has been very effective. He's only about five foot ten. You'd have to think he's a breaking ball type of pitcher. And a swing and a miss by Davis, who has homered and singled and has the average to 282. And you can throw in a good fastball, too, along with that. Yeah. <laughs> and a swing and a foul back, and Costello is out in front, 0-2. Herzog didn't waste much time, did he? No, he certainly didn't. I guess if you have a pitcher like Costello out in the bullpen, he's walked 14 in the 27 and two-thirds inning. He has 22 strikeouts. He's shown a good fastball all right up to this point. And now you got to think, well, now is it going to be the fastball, the slider, the curve? Eric has not seen it. He's going to go with the high fastball inside. And here is a high fly ball, but he got under it. Way deep to right. Brunanski is there. After four and a half innings, Cardinals lead 5-4. The Reds have closed the gap to 5-4 to four here in the bottom of the fifth inning as Frank Williams comes to the mound. And, well, it's a big weekend. We want to talk about the fact that he had binders and team pictures. How about this, Jay? Boy, I like huh? it. That's a great-looking corduroy Thank Reds you. cap, isn't it? Isn't that much. great? August 27th, you can all come down and get one of these specials. First 15,000 uh, in attendance, 18 and over, will receive a free Reds corduroy cap. This, is the, this, the, this distinctive cap will set you apart as a Reds fan wherever you go. It's Stanford Corduroy Cap Day. Sunday, August 28th. The Reds and the Cardinals at 2:15. It's a special date. It's all new for you. Make your plans now to attend the Reds Cardinals game on Sunday, the 28th, for Corduroy Cap Day. Thanks to Snapper Lawn and Garden Equipment. Well, that's a dandy item. Those folks at Snapper do a great job. Pendleton singles into left. And Pendleton is three for three, has two RBIs, and has scored twice. Here's Ozzy 
Smith, who has doubled and flied to left. Dibble just giving up his first hit. It's coming on with two gone in the third. Frank, excuse me, Frank Williams on the hill now. I'll give you the line on Dibble in a minute. As Oster came in to pinch hit, Dibble went one and a third. Gave up no runs, no hits. Struck out one and walked two. Another throw over by Williams. Frank has been a workhorse. 51 games now. He's been in 48 in the third innings with a 2.98 ERA and a 3 and 1 record. He was going back and forth there for a while. Got a little upset, remember? Yes, he was. That's inside. Cardinals now have eight hits. Smith batting from the other side now. And with a different bat. Yep. That's not the big black Guerrero bat that we saw him with earlier. Of course, the bat feels different from a different side of the plate as Ossie has switched around. Over by Williams, not in time. Pendleton, as Johnny mentioned, doesn't run nearly as well or as much as he used to. Is going and he is out. Well, he doesn't run as effectively, but this ball club still has stolen 193 bases, and that was a good throw by Bo Diaz. Sure was, and Pendleton is cut down. Tough well, pitch to handle, too, Johnny. Yeah, but he did it so well. You yeah. see the transfer, never lost it. Treadway right there to make the play and the tag, and Tim Pendleton no place to go. Two and two to Smith. That's inside. The rain has stopped. Fouled away. Cardinals leading by one. Five, eight, and zero oh for St. Louis. Four, five, and one for the Reds. Williams, the third hurler of the night for the Reds, following Charlton and Dibble. And got him on the outside corner. Smith has something to say to Jerry Davis, but it is a strikeout. And they're two gone with Okendo coming to the plate. Second baseman, Jose. We'll see what Jerry Davis saw. That's good enough from here. Yes, indeed. Kendo has a couple of hits, an infield single and a double, and he got two RBIs in the third inning when the Cardinals played at four. That's on the inside corner. Houston, five to one over Pittsburgh. That's a final. Foul outside of third. Sabo, Larkin, Treadway, and DeSaski on the Reds infield. Jose Rio bothered. You see the piece of elastic around that right arm down there. Just a little high, two and two. And that just missed inside, and the count is full. They're underway at San Diego. Padre scored two in their half of the second to lead it two to nothing over the Mets. Philadelphia's at San Francisco, Montreal at L.A. later. 
as Saski makes the play on his own. After five, St. Louis leads it five to four. For Cardinals, O'Neill at the plate. Here's Johnny with the play-by-play. -play. All right, Jay, thank you very much. John Costello came on in relief with one at two outs in the top of the fifth inning. Costello has really made a turnaround while in the minor leagues in the last couple of years. Faces Paul O'Neill, an off-speed pitch makes the count one and one. Costello at 27 years of age, 180 pounds. Paul fouls back. Was signed and as a free agent in the 25th selection, 1983. We got a praying mantis up here in the booth. Maybe he certainly bring do. Us some luck, huh? Maybe it was. Yeah, Nuxie handled it over here. I don't know what he wants me to do with it, but it's about <laughs> to be sent down the way here. That is a praying mantis of the first magnitude. Looky there. Woo. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. Costello was a starter when he first came out of Oceanside High School in New York. And they made him a reliever in 1986. And life turned around for John. Louisville this year, one and one with a 1.84 ERA in 20 games, had 11 saves, and he gets a strikeout here against Paul O'Neill in the top of the sixth inning to lead off. The contract was purchased on May 29th from the Louisville Ball Club. And he spent a little time in the Instructional League in '87 and impressed the Cardinals organization. 1-0 mark in 13 games and 0-9-0 ERA and he still hasn't got above one as he faces Nick Pesaski. Nick with a strikeout and a sacrifice fly in the fourth. Costello a quick worker and looks like fastball slider and a changeup in his repertoire. I'm not sure if it's a split fingered changeup or not. But he is ahead in the count. No balls and two strike. As Nick comes in with a 249 average the RBI for him. His 51st. Ooh, good fastball, good location, but just miss, says Jerry Davis, who's calling the balls and strikes here. Glad you're along with us. Reds scored first, but the Cardinals have come back to take a 5 to 2 lead. And the Reds have put single runs on the board in the fourth and the fifth. And Costello out of sync misses down again on its two balls and two strikes as Bo Diaz waits on deck. And in case you missed it, uh, trade Pittsburgh sending Mike Diaz to White Sox for Gary Reedus today. I'll tell you what, he's getting it up there pretty quick. This time just on the outside corner showing good location and the count goes full. Uh, very nice evening here at Bush Stadium. Rob Murphy warming in the bullpen. Hoping that the Reds can get down to the pitcher's position. There's a hard hit ball. And Bernanski's there to make the play. Two, ball, two outs here in the top of the six. Seattle leading Yankees 5-1. to one, Trying to salvage the second game of that doubleheader. The Yankees won the first game. Baltimore leads California 3-1 in the bottom of the seventh at Baltimore. Texas over Minnesota there in the top of the eighth at the Metrodome. Cubs look got one this afternoon, eight to seven. That was Mailer and Greg Maddox starters in that game. You would think they weren't around. Oakland took a four to one lead and then Boston came back. Go ahead six four. It's now seven six. And Milwaukee scored a run in the tenth inning to go ahead of Toronto five four. Ozzie will take care of Bo and it's a one two three inning for Costello. And the Cardinals will come to the dugout. They lead five to four, going to the bottom of the sixth. Lights are shining here at Bush Memorial Stadium. Johnny Bench along with Jay Randolph. The Cards lead five to four in the bottom of the sixth inning. Frank Williams on for his second inning of work and had a one-two-three inning after Pendleton was caught stealing. He will face. Tony Pena, John Costello has come out to the on deck circle, hit for himself, and then Vince Coleman. It was Norm Charlton starting tonight for the Reds. Norm had a rough time of it with the Cardinals' bats. 
Gave up seven hits, five runs, five earned runs. And they were all pretty well hit balls. Outfield straight away as Williams likes to work from the stretch. Gets a strike and the count goes two and one. Reds play tomorrow afternoon here and then Sunday we will bring you the game. 115 Central Time, 215 Eastern Time. And then we'll bring you all three games from Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh. Reds with a very important swing right now. They got by Chicago two out of three and now are trying to take the measure of the Cardinals. Frank falls behind the count, three balls and a strike. Pena into a double play and then popped to short. 250 average. And will Whitey turn him loose? I would think so. Yeah, it's up and in. It's no chance to swing, and he's aboard. First base on balls given up by Williams, and it's the fifth free pass that the Reds have issued tonight. Johnny, last year, the Cardinals won the National League East with a 95 and 67 record. They have already lost 67 games this season. Costello will now be in a position to sacrifice. No hitting record to show. He has batted three times this year without a sacrifice and he fouls this one off. How about that stat they put up on the board about Costello in 23 games the rookie has retired the first batter 21 times and just one of 14 inherited runners has scored. Maybe that's why Whitey went to it. I would think so. But and he, he went quick. And of course, in the first inning, Eric Davis had hit a home run off of De Leon and it singled the next time up. Costello trying to bunt and a weak effort, and it's strike two. He's registered at six foot one on his stat sheet, Jay, but I was down big. there earlier. And yeah. Doesn't look that big, and he doesn't look 27 years old. <laughs> Reddish, reddish complexion with the freckles. They always seem to have a lot less, more youth. Strikeout for Frank Williams. And Vince Coleman will bat with Pena at first. Second strikeout for Frankie. Coleman having a good night. Single in the first. Doubled in the third and scored. And he let off the inning. And that was the big inning for the Cardinals. After Coleman doubled, McGee grounded out, moving him to moving Coleman to third. Guerrero walked, Bernanski walked, and then Pendleton doubled. Ozzy fly to left, and it was not deep enough to score the runner from third. Then Okendo lined one off the wall to put the Redbirds ahead five to one. Five to two. Strike on the inside corner. Coleman two for three. Misses outside, and it's one ball, one strike. Reds have five hits on the evening. They have committed an error. That was by Bo when he tried to throw out McGee. Ball went into center field. McGee was able to go to third base, but as it turned out, he was stranded there. Dibble with a good effort tonight. Ground ball foul. McGee waits on deck. Coaches along the lines for the Cardinals. Nick Leva down at third base and Rich Hacker over at first. There's McGee on deck. Well, Danny Jackson with an outstanding performance. Number 17. Huh? He's tied for the lead in the innings pitch and right up there in a lot of departments. And boy, what a shot he's got at the. Cy Young, along with Oral Hershiser, is pitching tonight against Dennis Martinez. Greg Maddox pitched this afternoon, and I don't know that he got the win or loss of one at this time. But Danny has just been exceptional. You see him sitting there next to Larry Starr.
Larry is the one not in uniform. <laughs> well, he's in his uniform. <laughs> yes, sir. The Got great his shorts trainer. shorts and t-shirt off. What a wonderful trainer he is. Yes, Ground ball up the middle. Larkin, can he make a play? No. What? The last three steps, Holman just ate up turf. Boy, he can do it. Turns on that afterburner. It looked like, well, for most people, that's a double play. <laughs> oh, without a doubt. <laughs> Greg Darling, Gary Darling making the call over at first base. And so it's six unassisted at second base in the fielder's choice. Bowman can really fly a Taylor made double play ball. He touches the bag, makes the throw in fine fashion, but Coleman is there. Ooh. Carl Lewis and Ben Johnson, where are you? There goes Coleman. Throw down. Out. Got him. Oh, and they're going to be a little bit arguing with there. Fine throw. Good tag. Larkin will take a little while to get up after that collision. And Rich Hacker going down to try to get Coleman to stop the argument against Bruce Bromey. Bromey. Reds are out of the inning. We're going to the seventh. Let's stand up. It's the Cardinals leading 5-4 in the top of the seventh. And a little argument from Vince Coleman about the throw from Bo Diaz to Barry Larkin, Jay. Well, you can argue all you want to, but he was out. That's one angle, and uh, I think that showed it very well. This one is a little tougher to tell, but you can see that got the tag down in time. Well, let's see on. if John Costello can carry on what he's done in the 23 of times he's started an inning retiring the first man fastball away misses well it'll be Treadway and then right now no one is out as a pinch hitter Rob Murphy warms in the bullpen so there'll be a pinch hitter and this one fouled off the facing back in the back and it's one one Man is, young man has been very impressive. I guess 27. You'd have to say young in baseball sense. He gets a fly ball. Coleman should handle it easy. Coleman got an escort out the left field. He was trying to argue a little bit extra with Bruce Fremming and Tom Bernanski just sort of ushered him out towards the his area in left field. And Herm Winningham comes out of the dugout to pinch hit for Frank Williams, who does a nice job in relief. Bernanski came all the way over from right field to escort Coleman into left. Williams goes two innings. He gave up a hit, no runs. He struck out two and walked one. Herm is a pinch hitter. He's three for 16. Hitting 290 with the Reds. That's one for four as a pinch hitting role with the Reds. Three for 16 on the year. Of course, he came over from Montreal and the trade that brought in three his, players over his career Johnny he's 30 for 121 as a pinch hitter Tracy Jones of course went to Montreal Randy St. Clair has been sent down to Nashville and John Costello is the man of the moment fastball misses outside Daniels moves to the on deck circle and well, it's now a battle of relievers. Fly ball. And it's going to stay in the park, so Coleman can run anything down that stays in the ballpark and in the air. Two gone to both fly balls to left fielder. Cal Daniels. Of course, the right-hander supreme of the National League, Todd Worrell. Man that the Cardinals will be looking to as they get down in the latter part of this ball game. A fellow, though, who has struggled throughout much of this year and been rather unhappy with the front office here and has made no bones about it. Disappointed in the fact that they haven't done enough things to get this ball club right. That's right. Mr. Costello says there's nothing tricky about this game. All you do is throw hard fastballs on the outside corner. Mix in a little breaking ball. He'll go back away. And he's going to hit the outside edge again. He's got that wired. for the score two outs top of the seventh inning here at Bush Memorial Stadium. Dallas walked and struck out his last two times up and he looks at a fastball outside. And there's the 
change up used for effect. He would hope that if he's going to throw that hard, he'd get that change up up around the knees or towards the belt area. Time to tie this game up. Ooh, good pitch and just missed. Houston was a winner tonight. They beat Pittsburgh five to one. Mets are losing two to nothing out in San Diego in the top of the third inning. Montreal was scoreless in their half of the first against Oral Hershiser, and Philadelphia did not score in San Francisco. Ball four. A walk to Cal Daniels. Cal, of course, with good speed. And stolen 23 bases on the year. Yeah, yeah. See if it's any different with Costello working from the stretch as Sabo steps in. Tony Pena will take time to go out and talk to Costello. John has not seen the Reds, I don't believe, has pitched against them, at least here, and while we have broadcast. And I'm sure Tony wanted to make sure after he was sent word from the dugout that he needs to hold Cal close. Right now, Chris, who is tied for the league lead in doubles, trying to get him in. There goes Daniels, low throw, bounces, and a head first slide, and Daniels safe, and he slides into Okendo, and a little bit of that knee, and Stolen base, number 24 for Cal. He just walked out there and told him. Didn't make any difference. We'll get it for you from the jump right here as we isolate on Cal. Gets a good jump. Takes a look. Pena's throw. <laughs> Not in time. Look at Pena. He, he knows he's going to get it there in time. Cal with the hit first slide in there easily. And Kendo just protecting himself, making sure the ball didn't go to center field. Right. Reds with a chance to tie this game up. And this one fouled off. One ball, one strike. Reds took a 2 0 lead on Eric Davis's 23rd home run in the first inning. Cardinals scored one in the second, four in the third. And the Reds got single runs in the fourth and fifth. And that's how we stand at 5 4. Made a line drive. He's making that mid pop all the way up here. now and he struck out 56 walked 24 pitched 62 innings 2.47 ERA Murphy following Charlton Dibble and Williams line foul and games appearances Murphy tied with Juan Augusto down in Houston and 58 appearances and now he moves into the lead Augusto may have gotten in that ball game it's doubtful though it was a four to one game and really never changed but the workhorse again this year and it'd be nice for him to get his first victory of the season fastball up and away and the count evens at one ball and one strike. Beautiful Bush Stadium. Very colorful. Foul ball. And he with 142 hits on the year. 0 for 3 tonight. 0 for 2 tonight. Walked his last time up. Take a look at this 
Beautiful stadium. Great scoreboard. Both sides. Of course, the Cardinal vision out there in right field. Oh, foul off of Bo, and count remains one ball and two strikes. And wonder, nice crowd on hand tonight. About 35,000, Johnny. Yeah, they're scattered evenly throughout this stadium, all but the top three or four or five rows. And the Cardinals have responded. One ball, two strike, the count on Willie McGee. And he got him with the off-speed pitch. Murph comes in and quickly there's one out. down in Florida. Spent a lot of time in Kentucky, of course. Pedro has been aboard, as you saw, with the two walks. And was robbed of a hit by on a sparkling defensive play by Chris Sabo. In the first inning. Guerrero seems very happy in this new environment here. We'll see. He will linger, but will he last? Ah, yes. <laughs> he's 32 years old. And still a lot of productive years ahead of him. Yeah, he's had a lot of injury problems in recent years. Popped up high back of home, and it will go out of play. Pedro Guerrero. You know, the amazing stat was the one loss percentage of the Los Angeles Dodgers with Pedro in and out of the lineup. They found out they were a more effective ball club, at least this year, when Pedro was not in the lineup. And they got a left-hander in John Tudor that's one of the very best. Guerrero with a base hit up the middle into center field. And with one out. Hit of the evening for the Cardinals. Bruno stands in, struck out, walked, and on a check swing grounded to Sasky at first. Ball in the dirt. Handled by Bo and count one ball, no strikes. Texas leading five to nothing. They're shutting out the Twins in the Metrodome, top of the ninth there. Another ball on the dirt and a good stop by Bo. Final score the Red Sox have defeated the Oakland Athletics, seven to six. Milwaukee defeated Toronto, seven to four in ten innings. Cleveland over Kansas City, four two. That is a final. And the final from the Tiger Stadium, the Tigers have won again, defeating the White Sox 5-4. Grounded foul. Johnny, when Bernanski was traded over here on April the 22nd for Tommy Hur, he was batting only 183. And he had hit a home run and had only six RBIs. And he immediately picked the Cardinals up. Well, it was new life for him. And of course, after hitting in the Metrodome, uh, quite a stark difference. Strike call, two balls, two strikes. Yeah, hitting in that Metrodome and then coming down here. It's a big difference. Yeah, he hadn't had too many occasions, of course, except in last year's World Series. That's right. Tommy Herr just reactivated. He had been on the DL up in Minnesota. And Tommy wasn't real happy about the trade. Ooh, an off-speed pitch and Bruno way out front. Some talk about her maybe going over to the Phillies as we'll pause for station identification on the Cincinnati Reds television network. Your number one sports station in Cincinnati, WLWT. 5-4, bottom of the seventh inning with one out. Guerrero aboard, Cardinals leading. Bernanski at the plate. 2-2 count as Murphy works. Foul back. Uh, run that by me again about this rumor. Well, uh, hers made no bones about it. He's not particularly happy in Minnesota. He'd like to play for the Phillies. 
Oh, he's going to beat out one Samuel. I didn't say that. Oh. I said he would like to play for the Phillies. He would like to be able to go over there. His home is just about uh, 40 miles from Philadelphia. <laughs> it's interesting uh, what you hear. No, it takes a don't. crane to get Samuel off second unless they want to move him to the outfield. Ground ball, Sabo to Treadway. Turned it over, number 12. Grounded in double plays for Bonanski. The Reds have a couple more innings to catch up. They trail 5-4. inning and John Costello going to work against the Reds and line drive center field McGee can't get it ball bounces will Larkin try for two no might have had a shot but the great defensive center fielder for the St. Louis Cardinals you have to think twice on I'll tell you and that ball came within about two inches of going over McGee's head he is a great athlete John as you mentioned and he was able to get the glove on that ball just able to this ball gets by him it might have been three. Look at this now. Just gets that ball out of the air. This park does not have the kind of spring that other ballparks have. You know, a hot summer day, that ball would have gotten over his head. Of course, Eric Davis now at the plate. Eric having a good night. Two for three. 23rd home run. Thanks to young Brian Randolph. Working here in the booth for me. Heck of a waiter, isn't he? <laughs> Ball gets away from the bullpen, and there you see the bullpen of the Cardinals. Todd Worrell on the left and Ken Daly. Their one-two punch out of the bullpen. and Both have been disappointing. Well, when you, but you can say that a lot yeah. about this club when they're 17 and a half games out. Mark and one pennant throw. here last year that hangs out in center field. 31 stolen bases. You look at the 87 pennant, National League Championship pennant. They defeated the Giants. And of course, the Giants overtook the Reds. Costello with another quick move over. And Guerrero handles it. There wasn't as much love lost on either side in that Cardinal Giants series either. Well, the media built that up quite a bit. Brought the Jeffrey Leonard thing up. Had his flap down. A bluff by Larkin and a breaking ball downstairs. O'Neill on deck. And Whitey's given Costello a chance here to go one on one with Eric. And then they have to see what he does against O'Neill. Timeout called at home plate by Eric Davis. This is Jerry Davis, the umpire, working the plate, raises both hands, and Costello steps off as Larkin goes back and now gets back. And put back on the tarp. And there he goes. Taken. The throw down by Pena. Not nearly in time. Stolen base number 32 for Larkin. Second stolen base of the night for the Reds. And you get a chance to see Larkin really head down. Giving it everything he's got. Dives in there. Beats the throw. At it from home plate, the throw coming out. He's there. So a base hit will tie it up. And Costello behind the count, two balls and no strikes. Oh, it almost gets away from Pena. Three balls and no strikes. Costello a little upset with himself. Remember, he's thankful that Pena's back there. He can get around as well as anybody behind that plate. He and Benito Santiago has such great flexibility. It's amazing how much they can move back there. Bailey and Worrell are warm in the bullpen. He gives him the green light. Fly ball back to right field. Bernanski will catch it. Larkin will tag. And he'll move on to third base. And Eric gets the job done in a lot of different ways. So the tying run at third base and here comes Whitey just as we thought might happen and he is gone to the left hander daily to face Paul O'Neill and then he has Worrell for a Sasky if need be. One hard thrower is going to replace another one and they have one waiting in the wings. 
Whitey's got to be happy with Costello. We'll see how Daly does against O'Neill as we go away. It's 5-4 Cardinals with one out in the night. Eight. Five-four Reds. Larkin at third with one out. Daly on to face Paul O'Neill. And what about Daly? Daly is two and six. As I said, he's been a disappointment this year. He has a 3.79 ERA and four saves. He made a miraculous recovery from career-threatening off-season elbow surgery last year and became the number one short man out of the bullpen from the left side. Daly last year, 9-5 and five and a 2.66 ERA. Young man from out in Oregon and really last year's remarkable comeback player. He had that work done, the surgery by Dr. Job out in California to repair the damaged ligament on the inside of the left elbow and to transfer some of the nerves nearby and uh, it was amazing. Uh, you talk to this fella at Christmas of 86 he never thought he would have any opportunity. Ozzie holding court. Everybody just migrates to shortstop. Pendleton goes all the way over. Kendall goes all the way over. Now Guerrero has been drawn over to that area and the meeting breaks up and Daly will now face O'Neill who singled his last time struck out his last time up singled in the fourth and walked in the first and the infield will play in as Larkin leads at third and he gets the first pitch over and a tough pitch for Paul he couldn't believe it Costello went two and two thirds gave up a hit struck out one walked one of course Larkin belongs to him down there at third Remarkable, he was given that, had that operation, and still is able to throw as hard as he is. Yes. And he comes in and does the job. Gets a head in the count, no balls and two strikes to Paul. Sasky on deck, and you doubt that he would face Ken Daly. hit sacrifice fly high chopper catcher's interference oh what a play by Daly oh my my and Guerrero congratulating and here comes Herzog to take him out ball hit it right on the nose Jay he sure did and Daly as you described Johnny fielded the position well. It was a shot and Daly was there. And then immediately checked on Larkin at third and that that was slow motion. That just tells you. Well he, he does the job. He keeps the ball but he does the job defensively which really helps. Well Warrell coming on and we'll remind you that the Reds gift shop at the Hyatt Regency Cincinnati is now stocked with great new gift items and souvenirs. And uh, just in is the new cookbook uh, put together by the wives of the Reds. It's called Home Plate Favorites. And I want to get a copy of that. It's I got cool. one. Great stuff. Laura, has, great the, Laura has some recipes in there. And the proceeds benefit abused children at the Children's Hospital. And you can also buy tickets, of course, to all the upcoming Reds games while you're shopping with the convenience of no service charge to you. Come and check it out. The Reds gift shop located in the lobby of the beautiful Hyatt Regency Hotel, 5th and Elm Streets in downtown Cincinnati. Uh, it's really well done, Jay, and they've got pictures of uh, some of the husbands and wives together in that. Uh, Laura has her special recipe for pancakes and how to go down to the store and shop for the, uh, the mix. <laughs> now wait a minute. No, no. we put it no. in there. That's the way we wanted to That's put it the in way there. You do it with a mix. You well, don't... sure you do. You I go down you... there and get it out of a box. Why well, not, Johnny? Your folks down in Oklahoma made pancakes. Well, from certainly scratch. they did. But I'll tell you what. I'll match Laura's up with anybody, and she makes that with the eggs and the milk and all that stuff. And then she adds a lot of love and serves it right there for me. <laughs> and I just, I said, that's what we got to put in there. That's the recipe we need. Sounds She's got a couple of pasta me. recipes, too, which is great. Here's Todd Worrell. <laughs> Saw some of the stats on him. Four and nine with a 3-2-4 ERA, but he has 23 saves. 
He's finished 42 ball games, and as you said, Jay, he's been somewhat of a disappointment. But 72 and a third innings, he's only allowed 54 hits. He has struck out 67. Wow. Walking only 26. Led the league in saves with 36 in 86. Had 33 last season. Big guy from out in Arcadia, California. Has five wild pitches and two balks. And he faces Nick and that's a good fastball hitter. He looks at a fastball inside. Morell was the first pitcher, in fact, Johnny, to save 30 or more games his first two full seasons in the big leagues. Well, he's trying to save it for John Costello. This one way upstairs. Two balls and no strikes. Bo on deck. Costello came in. And got the last out in the top of the fifth inning. De Leon had started. Norm Charlton was the starter for the Reds. It's one of the things the relievers haven't had as many opportunities for saves this year as they have in past years, certainly as they did last season. The 2 0 pitch. Upstairs, 3 0. Bruce Kim. Urging a Saski on, and the three and zero count will Pete turn him loose. It'd be nice to have the winning run on base. He had turned him loose, looked like, but he walked him. Worrell comes in and walks Nick Saski, and here's Bo, who's 0 for three. Worrell uh, has been a very stabilizing factor here in St. Louis for Whitey Herzog, Nick Leva there on the left. And uh, as I mentioned, he's been a little out of character this year. He's complained about his salary, complained about the front office not giving the team the players they needed to win. And normally he'd been a very quiet soldier on the team. John Franco gets up to warm. You saw in the background when they showed Leva and Herzog, Mike Rourke, and I said, you've had an interesting year, haven't you? And he said, I've seen a lot of new faces. There's about a 95-mile-an-hour fastball over. There's the man from Brooklyn, Mr. Franco. Leads the league in saves. 26 out of 27. at WCAY Channel 30 in Nashville, Tennessee tonight. General Manager Dick Williams, Dale Foshi, General Sales Manager and Program Director Chris Bailey and all the staff and all the listeners in Nashville. Good to have you with us. And the two-strike pitch to Bo. And it was a breaking ball fouled at the plate. They're listening in Dayton tonight on Channel 2, WDTN. Bill Stoltz is there. He's the general manager. Right. Program director Steve Fisher and Larry Ryan, the sales manager. Dayton, Ohio. Bill was down in spring training. Larkin at third base. Masaski at first. Reds trailing five to four. Two out here in the top of the eighth inning. He swung, he's bad at it, made contact. The bat went out towards the first base area, and he thought he had beat it out, but he didn't. Ozzy retires him. The Cardinals are out of the inning. They lead 5-4 as we go to the bottom of the eighth. We're happy you joined us here in Bush Memorial Stadium. I'm Johnny Bench along with Jay Randolph. It's the bottom of the eighth inning. The Cardinals are leading 5-4. And we'll make sure that you stay tuned for local news on most of these stations right after this game. The Seattle Mariners defeated the Yankees in the second game of the doubleheader. It's Mike Moore out of Eakley, Oklahoma, 13 miles from Binger, the winning pitcher. <laughs> Get it in there. <laughs> yes, indeed. And Mike Greenwell picked up the game-winning RBI for the Red Sox. That was his 16th of the season. Well, he's been something. The paid attendance here tonight. 36,322, 38,165 in the house at Bush Stadium. 
again, a few of them have drifted off, but this game still not decided as Terry Pendleton trying to make it a four hit night for himself. Single, double, couple of RBIs, and then single again was caught stealing. Added eight points onto his batting average this evening. He's up to 262. Montreal at LA, scoreless, third inning. Well, only one time in his career has he had four hits in a game. That was. Well, he probably has had more than that. The most hits was in 1987. Career high, he's had four hits five times. And the last time against the Cubs last year. San Diego leading New York 2 0 there in the fourth. Philadelphia and San Francisco are nothing, nothing, third inning. Terry Pendleton bothered early by hamstring then on the disabled list after he re injured it looks at a fastball upstairs and it's 1 1. Ozzie Smith on deck followed by Jose Akendo. As the Cardinals fan fans try to start a little clapping get something going here in the bottom of the eighth inning trying to extend their lead. Foul back and count 2 2. Pendleton needing a little more Rosner pine tar goes to the pine tar I don't see too much of that anymore of course the umpires have really cut back on letting the hitter go back to the on deck circle trying to speed the game up and I mean look here we've speeded it right up to almost three hours two hours and 50 minutes we're closing in on. Norm Charlton was treated rather rudely. Got out of the first inning, gave up a hit to Coleman. Gave up a run on the second inning on a single to Pendleton and a double by Ozzie Smith. He gave up a single to Okendo. Finally got a double play and a strikeout. But then the third inning was a tough one for the youngster. Double, ground out, a couple of walks, a double, fly ball, and a single off the wall. Played it four runs, and that was the evening for Norm Charlton. And those two walks really hurt, and Pendleton's double got two home, and Okendo's double got two home. Well, it's kind of inspiring if you're a hitter that's back hitting behind Guerrero and Bernanski, and you think that they're pitching around somebody to get to you, and then you go up there and just look for the first pitch, and you're really juiced up, and you hammer on it. Fly ball, center field, four hits for Terry Pendleton. What a night for the third baseman. Straight to start out at 254 and have your average go up to about 266. Ozzie Smith double, and right now he has the game-winning RBI. I'm sorry, he does not. That would go to. Terry Pendleton. If the lead holds up. Yep. Yeah. a double flat out and struck out. And he's gone over to the black mat, and for some reason, Sabo thinks that Ozzy's going to sacrifice. Of course, Ozzy has the great ability to drop it down the third baseline, almost a la a drag bunt situation, but Chris is just edging his way down, and Ozzy bluffs. Why do you like to have another run for Orrell and his Cardinals? Nick Lava flashing signs to Ozzy. Smith wrote a book after last season. He was rather critical of some of his teammates and his manager. But it successfully sacrificed for Ozzy Smith. One to four as Terry Pendleton moves to second base. Yes, the book was uh, thought of in different fashions, you might say. Depending on your point of view, right? <laughs> Murphy's only been scored on in three of the last 33 relief appearances dating back to June the 5th. 
Well, only 20 hits and seven runs in 34 and two thirds inning. And he struck out 35. And he needs to get Okendo and then Pena. Sinker away. Rob came up to me the other day and said, you were saying something about my fastball was only 82 or 83 miles an hour or something about though you know they'll be able to hit this fastball I I said the only thing I might have said was the fact that they're not going to be able to catch up with this one however Okendo caught up with that one that's only Okendo's fourth home run of the year he has four RBIs on the night a single, a double, and now the home run to go with a ground out in the fifth, and that hurt. Well, that was the seventh career home run for Jose Okendo. He just missed one off of Charlton the first time up. Here it is, and he got enough of it. The fans want him to come out and take a bow, but he might, but it's not a kendo style. Ellie does come up just for a minute. The secret weapon, we talked about him. He can beat you so many ways. He is a talented fellow who come off the bench or play anywhere out there. Slow roller, Sabo have to hurry. this year he pitched in relief he was the only well he's the first non pitcher to get a decision played eight positions last year yeah, I saw the Rocky Colavito back in 1968 got a decision he pitched four innings and Orell will hit for himself with two outs and the Reds now down by three yeah. tough road to hoe here Fans getting ready to leave. Well, fouls back. One ball, one strike. Morrell has five career saves against the Reds. Kendo's homer measured at 352 by their measurement laser arrangement that they have. Oh yeah, here. they haven't listed all of them down here. Most of them are in the 380s and 390s. This is not a ball club that's going to hit it 450 feet. Indeed. Two balls, two strikes. There's a Kendo. Yeah, seven career home runs. Four have been against the Giants. Ball down on the dirt. Three balls and two strikes. Pitched so well. And one guy you think you can challenge and get away with, and it's Okendo. Foul at the plate and fouled off a bow. Full count. Reds in their half of the inning will send up Treadway, a pinch hitter, and Daniels. And hopefully more. Settling in. And into our booth as the wind carries it in. Doesn't smell very good, does it? No. Yeah. The wind did not have any effect on Okendo's ball. Ball four, and Murphy walks for a rip. That's not a very good idea. Well, you can imagine how upset he is to begin with of giving up the home run to Jose. And Cardinals will now send up Vince Coleman. Two for four on the evening. And to score to run. Average of 270. Cardinals now with 11 hits. 
Reds with six hits and they have committed an error. We'll be back on Sunday afternoon, 2.15 Central Time, 2 o'clock Central Time. Have you a pregame show for you. Let's play here tomorrow afternoon and then go on to Pittsburgh before going back to Riverfront Stadium and they'll make up a game. There goes Warrell and Coleman swings and fouls. How about that? They're sending a pitcher. Well, they played a Sasky so far back. He said, why not? Warrell will return and Coleman will have to get a new bat. The rainout game that was so early in the season against the Cardinals will be made up next Thursday night. Now remember, if you've been looking at your schedule, there will be action Thursday evening at Riverfront, 735 next Thursday. And the Cardinals are in for Friday, Saturday, Sunday action before the Pirates come to town on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday to end the month of August. And now back with a fresh piece, piece of ash. Man, looks like he's used that bat a lot of times. He's already got a well pine tart, and that matter of fact, that pine tart may be a little too far up that a little high handle. Huh? Yes, they wanted to check it. the strike you take a look at that it's only supposed to go up 18 inches that's up to that barrel there Murphy really now has lost his concentration as he walks Warrell and Coleman back to back Willie McGee looking for his first hit of the evening and it all started out here in the eighth inning when Terry Pendleton got his fourth hit of the evening and Pete Cannot find a comfortable place to sit right now. Boy, that bench gets hard when things like that happen. Murph having trouble getting the ball down. Yeah, Scotty will go out and talk to him. Pitching pairing here tomorrow. Tom Browning goes for his 12th victory against Greg Matthews, who's just been called back up. And it'll be Tim Burtz's, we imagine, on Sunday. Got his first win, of course, recently for the Reds. Scott Terry was 3-3. Three and three. Scott Terry, a former outfielder, converted into a pitcher in the Reds organization. Texas defeats Minnesota. They shut him out. Five to nothing. Seattle 5-3 in the first but lose the second game. Boston keeps pace with the Tigers. The Tigers and the Red Sox both win. Milwaukee beats Toronto. Cleveland beats Kansas City. Runners with a short lead and Murph really having problems finding the plate and better start finding it pretty quick as Guerrero is on deck. Two outs. And a fastball fouled out of play. Philadelphia and San Francisco are scoreless, as is Montreal and L.A. in the fourth innings out on the West Coast. Cubs beat the Braves 8-7. And the Astros getting good pitching to beat Pittsburgh 5-1. to one. Foul ball. Two strikes. In the sixth inning, the Padres are shutting out the Mets 2 0. Pittsburgh could not gain ground. Montreal behind Dennis Martinez will try to pick up some against the Dodgers and Oral Hershiser. He's having a great year for the Dodgers. He just gets a piece of it, fouls it back to the screen, and once again the count 
two balls, two strikes, and two outs. Guys, look at that Yankee chain. Yeah, MVP in '85. You'll remember. Full count, and they'll be off and running. Orrell will have to do his best to keep in front of Vince Coleman. Base on ball. Orell at third, Coleman at second, McGee at first, and Bo's going to hurry out and talk. Well, he's not going to be in any hurry. He's going to talk to Rob, and Rob says, I have no idea at this moment. Davis is going to go out because I think he understands that he's trying to get enough time for John Franco to warm up. Six. That really makes it tough. Line drive, center field. Here comes Davis. He dies. He can't get it. Ball goes to center field. Guerrero with a chance for an inside the park grand slam. Round second. He comes to third. He's not going to make it. He's broke down. He thinks he's got a chance. It's just under the glove, and bye-bye. A couple of big innings here for St. Louis, a team that hasn't been scoring many runs. They got four runs on three hits in the third. And here they have five runs on three hits in the eighth. And we'll be back with more right after this. Well, after all the great effort by Rob Murphy over the past two months plus, well, it all goes up in a hurry right here tonight before us all. And John Franco will have to come in on a rare move as the Reds trail by six runs, 10 to four, to do the job. Franco with a 1.36 ERA and 53 ball games now that he's appeared in. 66 innings, 44 hits, and a phenomenal record over that period of time. Murphy, up. inning and two thirds, five runs on four hits. He struck out one and walked three, and Guerrero belongs to him. And the ninth man in the order will face Franco. First pitch, that's as easy as it should get. Five ball, Sasky. Reds trail 10-4. We're going to the top of the ninth. Top of the ninth inning, and as Broderick Crawford would say, 10-4, 10-4. Or where do you go to quit? Yeah. <laughs> That's what he said in the old highway patrolman. That's the score. 10-4. Cardinals 10, Reds 4. They've scored five runs in the ninth inning, and it started out so innocently. And Worrell will now try to close the door against Treadway and a pinch hitter and Cal Daniels. Local news will follow right after this game on most of these Reds television network stations. And Jeff Treadway. 
And then Jeff over for three tonight. Like to get a hit to not make this a disappointing night all the way around. Jeff has hit safely in nine of the last ten games, hitting 324 in that stretch. Just been fouled off. Hitting 333 in the last 15 games. Chattanooga beat Huntsville last night, two to nothing. Cedar Rapids lost. They're 34 and 25. Greensboro 35 and 25 lost. Fouled out of play. Greensboro. Interesting to know where all of our ball clubs are. Billings, Montana beat Salt Lake City 6 to 5 in 12 innings. And the Gulf Coast Reds are having their problems down there. I guess we better have drafted differently. They have a record of 20 and 34. Nashville Sounds and left Oklahoma City today. They won last night. They're up in Denver today. That's where Norm Charlton would have normally started. Maybe it's Jack Armstrong who got the start. You know, know that probably Sunday. Ball down and away, and it's two balls and two strikes. Morrell trying to. Gain a save. Ground ball. Okendo. Over to Guerrero, who must have had just a cramp. Now that lineup and out in Los Angeles and running those bases a long way for Pedro at this time of the season after he's had so many injuries still kind of flexing that leg over there the right bit. leg yeah it seems to be bothering him. he's doing some stretching and flexing it there Dave Collins will now get a chance to pinch hit Dave is a pinch hitter 10 for 29 doesn't catch up to the fastball by Warrell Dave hitting at 232. 29 out of 125 in his career. 29 for 125 is a lifetime pinch hitter. Yeah. Yep. And an out. And it's number two. It's Coleman makes the play. And Cal Daniels has walked twice and struck out twice. Philadelphia San Francisco they're still scoreless in the fourth Montreal at L.A. scoreless in the third. Mickey Mantle walked seventeen hundred times and struck out seventeen hundred times and you can figure it out he he really didn't go to bat for six years. <laughs> Cal 0 for two tonight with two strikeouts and two walks. He's uh, kept his on base percentage right where it is and above came in the night. With an on base percentage of 402 looks at a fastball away. Well, Eric Davis tonight hit his 23rd home run, had a couple of hits in the game. Bonnie Oster did a job pinch hitting, and Barry Larkin tripled and singled his last two times up. He has two hits. Eric with two hits, Ronnie with a hit, and Paul O'Neill with the other hit tonight. Only six on the board. We'll be back here on a hot summer afternoon tomorrow and Sunday afternoon. Slider. Two right in the same spot. Two balls and a strike. One ball and two strikes with two outs. And Fred Bird, the mascot for the Cardinals, on top of the dugout. Trying to get the fans, and I'm surprised they're not standing at this point. An ugly bird. Oh. But very popular. Yeah. It was fun at the old ball yard. Well, yes, for those people. Yeah. Long drive, center field. McGee. 